I thought I'd take a break from the desk tour this year to show you all something different while I work on revamping the setup in order to accommodate for my new living arrangement. Without any further introduction, I'd like to present, for your viewing pleasure, the politically incorrect home theater. I'll pick this up and check this out. In order of least interesting to most, we'll start out with the 2006 Sony Trinitron KD-32FS170 Direct View CRT. This is a 480i standard definition set from Sony and probably one of the last of its kind. As a result, it has some neat features but also cheaps out a bit, as this was definitely one of the brand's lower end products. PQ is run of the mill for a 480i unit with plenty of bloom which is the phenomenon where the picture gets bigger as the brightness increases and smaller when there is less content being displayed on the screen. It's hooked up to the old DirecTV Genie receiver using composite video. The Genie actually supports component video output and the Sony has component in, so you'd think that it would make more sense to use component. However, since I have the Genie set to HD for some of the other equipment that we'll talk about here in a bit, and because of the fact that the Sony will not accept anything higher than 480i resolution, composite video is the only way to get standard def and HD out of this box simultaneously. And it's notably better than the horrible little PACE cable box that we had in here before. At any rate, the star of the show here is actually the Daylight Instathiatry Deluxe 100-inch high-gain projection screen. I picked this thing up for a cool $80 by way of Craigslist, and while the geometry isn't perfect, the portable nature of the product more than makes up for it. I can actually transport this 100-inch screen in my car and still have room for a projector and other items. Speaking of, the heart of my new system here is this magnificent Dell 1610 HD Multimedia Projector. As the model designation implies, it has a 1610 aspect ratio and does indeed support HD resolutions. I actually found it through a wanted ad on Craigslist, making it the second piece of my daily gear found in that way. This thing also set me back about $80, but was well worth it. The set puts out massive levels of brightness like nobody's business, and the contrast is so incredible that my camera can't even hope to capture an accurate representation. Even with the craptastic lighting in this room washing out the screen, the projector's powerful light engine cuts right through it and produces a fully viable image even with the lamp set to low power mode. If you thought that a hearing with four constitutional law experts wouldn't have any big moments. Boy, were you wrong. Man, are you high. <laughs> if I kill this nasty lighting, you can't see it, but viewers in person can appreciate the excellent native contrast ratio of this set, as well as its versatile 1280 by 800 resolution. And it's all native to the chipset. There's no dynamic iris nonsense or wobulation going on here. In fact, I don't even think that it has a dynamic iris. It's a very organic experience. The projector also accepts VGA, HDMI, and even component video, albeit through use of an adapter, but it still counts, meaning that it supports the elusive high-definition trifecta. To top it all off, this unit also adopts Dell's slick modern design language and complements my precision laptop quite well. While the 1610 aspect ratio might seem like a suboptimal choice for home theater, it actually works out well for my mix of viewing that consists mostly of 169 video, a bit of 43 emulation, and also some native aspect applications. Sound is handled by this classic Bose system. I don't have the original documentation, but I believe that this is considered to be the Lifestyle 10, which includes the AM5 subwoofer and amplifier, as well as a feeble and arguably poorly aged receiver. Despite their dusty appearance, the system gives off what I consider to be 
decent sound and complements the Genie quite well. My only gripe is that its remote is a radio control instead of infrared, so I can't bring it into my mix of macros on the universal remote, but it's still infinitely better than the Sony's built-in speakers. In terms of architecture, we've got this well-loved brown couch and a small red box for the laptop to rest on if I want to get up and walk around. This is made possible by a spare 200 watt AC adapter for the Precision that I found by complete chance, also on Craigslist. Speaking of that laptop, I'm not going to go into too much detail as I've already got a vlog and comprehensive review of it published for your enjoyment, but it's a solid 17 inch machine and last year's pick for used computer of the year. Obviously it feeds the combined 3.35 megapixels of the two monitors effortlessly and when combined with the television for auxiliary viewing makes for an excellent triple display setup. The only improvements I have in mind at this point are some kind of more elegant mounting solution for the laptop and speakers as well as a possible re-implementation of the trusty sling box. For a total out of pocket expense of less than $175 plus the laptop and extension cord, I really can't complain. Each piece of equipment more or less complements the others, and the system just feels nice to use, so I'm pretty happy with it. At this time, I want to thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll stick around for the return of the desk tour format next time. This is Browning Gates signing off. Thanks for watching.